Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing out five random kitchen gadgets to see if they actually work. One of them I purchased on Amazon, two were sent to me for consideration for my store, and two of them were sent to my PO box unsolicited. So let's get started in today's video. All right, first up, the one item I did purchase from Amazon, it was, was eight bucks. This is the Can Colander. I've had some requests for this one. Pretty basic design here. It says to drain tuna, you press it down into it. To drain other canned foods, you flip it over and pour through it. Pretty simple and not much to it, but it does seem like it would work. This is actually quite highly rated. I've had a lot of requests for this one, so I'll be curious to see how it actually works. All right, the way this is supposed to work is for tuna, it's supposed to go inside after you open it up, press it down, all the juice comes out, you should be good. For other cans, you're supposed to put it on the outside and then drain it that way. All right, so here we go. I've got a nice freshly opened can of tuna with lots of juice in there. So the way we're supposed to do this is just press it down. I guess we're supposed to kind of drain, the, drain most of it out like this. And then you can literally press it and get even more out. Look at that. Oh, I'm pressing hard. You can literally like just push it as hard as you want. Wow, that that definitely got all the uh, all the juices out of there. Pretty good. Yeah, hardly any juice came out. Look, not, nothing. No juice at all. I guess it strained it pretty well. How about something basic like this can of green beans? The way I understand it, you just put the colander over it. I guess you hold the tabs and then dump. Uh, so far, so good. I think we're on a roll here. Let's uh, let's keep going. How about some Del Monte Very Cherry? Lots of uh, lots of liquid in there. Put the colander on top and dump. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty simple, but it works really well. I mean, you could dump this into a colander also, but the fact that it keeps it in the can, I guess that's kind of a nice touch. All right, so I've got this very overflowing can of pineapple slices. Now you do it this way, it's not gonna really fit on there. It doesn't really fit. What if I do it like this and just dump it out this way? It works. So even if the can is too big, you can still make it work. It's very simple, but it's cheap and works well. So I think the can colander is a success. All right, next up, this is one of two items I'm actually considering for my store. This is a crinkle cutter. You can use this for potatoes or vegetables. The way I understand it is you can do one cut for wavy and two cuts for crinkle cut fries. I've got a few different items here I can try it out with. It does seem pretty sharp here. This blade uh, it's, it may not look that sharp, but it's pretty sharp. Uh, these seem to be pro pretty popular online, so um, I have high hopes for it. So let's see how it goes. Let me start off with the, uh, the smallest of the bunch here. This is carrot. Just cut that end off. That end doesn't look so good anyways. All right, let me try a normal cut here. And, oh, it looks nice. Very crinkle cut. It's kind of thick. Let me do a few more of these. I don't know how, how much you have to really worry about being exact. It seems like it works pretty well. That's pretty good. I'm kind of feeling the wavy carrot cut. That's nice. Do a few more of these. Kind of speed, speed up a little bit here. Make sure I don't want to wavy cut my fingers. All right, I think the first, first impression it worked very well, very nice. Let me try something else. All right, next up, let's try something like this. Say we're gonna make some wavy pickle slices. Let's see how those go. Cut the end off there. Here we go. Oh, that's even very, very fat, it's very sharp. And it seems to go pretty quickly. I'm kind of going fast to see if I can do this fast. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I'm, I'm getting kind of uh, thinner as I go. Let's start off kind of thick. I'm trying to make these even thinner. I think that, uh, that looks pretty good. All right, let me try a potato and see if I can make some crinkle cut french fries. Here we go. I'm just gonna cut a few of these here. Now normally I would probably peel this, but I, I'm just, for purpose of this uh, video, I'm not peeling them. I guess I want a little bit thicker. So the way I understand it, you're supposed to go one round Cutting it through this way, and then you're supposed to turn them on their side and cut them this way. 
Aha, look at, look at this, beautiful crinkle cut french fry right there. I'm actually a little bit impressed because it's so simple. I'm speeding through these potatoes. Beautiful crinkle cut potatoes that I didn't spend much time on. I probably could have made them even better if I tried, but all right, so the fact that I was able to create those so easily, so quickly, I think that it's a simple gadget, but it works pretty flawlessly. So for that reason, I'm going to include it on my website so that by the time this video is posted, I will have a listing for it on my freaking store. Let's see what's next. All right, next up, the second of two items I'm considering for my store, and that is this, which doesn't really have a name, it just says it's a soup pour spout. There isn't a lot to it, you just basically clip it over the edge of your pot and pour your soup into a bowl more easily than pouring from the pot itself, I guess. I will say I've seen a couple of reviews for similar ones online, they're not real good, but maybe I'll have a different result than those people do. All right here, I have a generic bowl of Campbell's chicken noodle soup and I need to pour it into this bowl. So what we're supposed to do is just put this over the edge of the pot. I guess just, just like that. There aren't really any instructions for this. All I know is that you're supposed to be able to pour stuff. A lot of people are saying it does not work very well. I can say by how loose it seems to go on there, I can see that this could be a, a problem, but let's try it out. Here we go. It's either gonna be in the bowl or on my counter. Oh, it's <laughs> pouring, it missed the bowl. Let me look at this. I'm going to pour and it's actually coming out of the uh, bottom, it's not even going where it's supposed to go. It's not even working it properly all over the case. It's a disaster. It's a complete disaster already. Terrible, that's, I mean, come, could it be a worse design than that? Get out of here, this is, I'm not putting this on my store. If you want one, I'll find a link to one on Amazon, but I'm not gonna sell this. This is a piece of junk, and it doesn't work right. Let me try this one more time on a smaller pot here. I got this one, I'm just gonna fill it with water and see if I can pour anything out of there without it leaking out of the bottom. You can kind of see that it's just not, it's already not flush against the side, which is going to spill underneath there. It's just a bad design. Let's put some water in here and see what happens, which we know what's going to happen. Right out of the bottom. It's not even coming out of the spout, it's coming out of the bottom. Oh, it's just awful. This, that's right, I gave it a second chance, and second chances aren't always deserved. Not in this case, I think this is another failure. Let's move on to the next item. Next up is one that was sent to me by Dream Farm, which I've done quite a few of their items in the past. This is, it's an ice cream scoop they call the Ice Po. It wouldn't be Ice Po, it's gotta be Ice Po, right? They say that it's an ice cream scoop that serves a perfect half cup portion and creates an instant ice cream sandwiches. Sounds easy enough. I didn't find a lot of stuff on this though. The way you're supposed to do this is you insert it into the ice cream, you twist and you pull it out. And then there's a little lever here that dispenses the ice cream. It has four wires in here, which is kind of interesting. I'm kind of Worried they're gonna get messed up, but they say that's not gonna happen. Something else I noticed when they were scooping ice cream is always from a fresh container. What about when you've got some ice cream taken out of there? How does that work? I'm gonna find out. Here we go, first scoop. And I've, I've got a couple of cookies right here. They say that you can use with any cookies. So my first attempt's gonna be an ice cream sandwich. And after that, we'll just do some random scoop and see how it goes. So here we go. Should be easy enough, right? So the first thing you're supposed to do is stick that in the ice cream. And this ice cream is medium firmness. All right, so it's going in there not too bad. Now we're supposed to twist it. I'm just twisting it. Pull it out. All right, that's what we, that's what we got. That's not really, not quite like the pictures, but it's not too bad. Can I dispense it onto this cookie here? I'm gonna need to use two hands here. Ah, okay, there we go, oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, <laughs> hmm, that's not quite what the picture shows. I only found one review online, it was in a comment, and they said that the ice cream fell into four parts and I just had that happen, so let me try another one before I make my final decision on this, but that first one did not go so well. So I'm just gonna move those off to the side and leave my cookies for the next one. Now the other question is what happens when you've already got ice cream taken out of there? How does that work? Let's find out. Maybe it gets better over time. I'm not sure if this is really the way you're supposed to do it. Okay, that's what we got here. 
I'm gonna put it against the ice cream, the cookie. I'm gonna put it against the cookie. Maybe I can just dispense it easier that way. And and I, I kind of I kind of did it. It's still in four parts though, but I was able to contain them within the cookie. Let's see. I mean, that's not that's not too too bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad either. What's also interesting is like I've got this hole in here, and then you know you, you kind of push. You have this lip here that pushes down into the existing hole. That's smaller. It's a little it's a little bit awkward. Um, well, I think I know why they show it only going into a brand new container of ice cream because once you get that first scoop out, it becomes much more difficult. And if that first one doesn't go well, you're kind of SOL. I did get a decent one. Not great, but I got a decent one. I guess it's good for making one ice cream sandwich, but unless you have one of those large tubs, the kind right here, which is what they show in, in their video, doesn't seem to work so well. I'm a big fan of Dream Farm, but this one I'm kind of struggling with. Let's see how this cream sandwich tastes. That's not bad. It's just not going so well. It's just not going so well. After, it seemed like each one got worse and worse as I got deeper into the ice cream. All right, and finally, the most expensive of the bunch, this one was sent to my P.O. box. It is the Ice Gone, which is a defrosting tray. Now, the last time I did a defrosting tray was many years ago. So what the Ice Gone has going for it is that it's a big slab of aluminum. And they have these fins here, which they say helps direct the heat away from the food more efficiently. The first thing I noticed is it doesn't have any kind of lip on the outside, so I wonder if juices are gonna roll off the edge. Hopefully not, but it could. What I'm gonna do is compare the Ice Gone to just a regular cutting board. I'm gonna put a couple different things on here and see how they go. I went on the Ice Gone website. They say a hamburger will defrost in 10 minutes on here. We shall see about that. And they say a steak will take 20 minutes. Very skeptical, but you never know. Maybe I'll be impressed. How about a couple of frozen hamburger patties? I'm gonna put one on the Ice Gone. One on the cutting board, and we'll start the stopwatch and see how it goes. I'm gonna check back in about five minutes because they say you're supposed to flip it. I'll flip it after five minutes, and then we'll compare the two of them. I look at my thermal imaging here. It's so low, it just it doesn't even really register. This is for the ice gone, for the cutting board, also too low to even register. I'll be very curious how this looks once they are flipped. All right, we're at the five minute mark. Let's see if there's a difference between the two burgers. All right, flipping the ice gone. Flipping the cutting board. Okay, looking at the, the cutting board side, looks like it's uniformly still cold. The ice gone side looks like we have a little bit of a warm spot there that may have been in more contact with the, uh, the surface. Just like the edges look like they're a little bit warmer because they were in contact with the surface. I guess the problem with that is the burger is not 100% flat, so anything that was touching the surface seemed like it thawed faster. Anything that was not in direct contact did not. All right, I'll try this again at the 10 minute mark and see what the difference is. All right, we're at the 10 minute mark. That's how long they say a burger will take to defrost. Let's check it out. I will say that this one feels more defrosted than this one. The surface feels softer on this one than this one for sure. And you can see that quite a bit of that seems like it's, it's warmed up versus the cutting board, which is still pretty ice cold. I would say it, maybe 10 minutes is a bit ambitious, but it's certainly more defrosted than the, than the cutting board side. You can see I can actually push my finger down on this one. This one, not really. Even though it's gonna take longer than 10 minutes, I, it, it seemed like it was faster than the, than the cutting board, so I gotta give credit for that. Before I go on to the steaks, I just wanna show something here. If you look at the ice gone, you can see the entire thing is around 69, 70 degrees. But if you look at the cutting board, there's still a big cold spot in the middle. So it looks like the ice gone was able to absorb the temperature more evenly where the cutting board, all the, the cold just kind of stayed in one spot. Because there's nothing on there, but it still shows where the burger was. I guess I'll let these warm up to room temperature before I give my next test. All right, next up for the ice gone, a couple of very frozen steaks. Let's see how they go. Just gonna plop them on here. Now they say it takes 20 minutes to defrost a steak. They were kind of close on the hamburger, so let's see what we got here. I should also point out that I put this one on a plate because the cutting board wasn't very good. So maybe a plate will, will do a better job, we shall see. Thermal imaging, very low. 
Thermal imaging, very low. Both stakes look like they're gonna be nice and cold, and we'll come back in 10 minutes and see what the difference is. Here we go at the 10 minute mark. This should be the halfway mark for stakes according to the ice gun instructions. Let's see. I'm gonna do one flip here. One flip there. All right, the ice gun steak looks like it has a couple of warm spots, mostly still frozen though. The plate has, has even less warm spots. It's like hardly anything got warm on there. So I guess it's doing a little bit better, but really it's still pretty frozen. After 10 minutes, this doesn't, there's not a huge difference between the two of these. So I don't know, we'll see. 20 minutes for a steak? I don't know about that. At 20 minutes, they say a steak will be done being defrosted. I'm not so sure about that. Let's check it out. It's not totally defrosted. I don't feel a big difference between the two of these. Let's uh, check the thermal imager. Uh, still cold and still cold. Let's, uh, let's flip them. All right, it's funny, you can see where the steak was in contact with the defrosting plate, and it's definitely warmer right there. And not so much with the control plate. But once again, if it's not completely flat, you might get an uneven defrosting. Yeah, right here is defrosted, but out here isn't. But this was in contact with the tray, and this wasn't. This feels pretty much still frozen. It's going faster, but it's just not 20 minutes. I'm gonna go another 10 minutes and see what happens then. Here we go. It's at the 30 minute mark. They said 20 minutes, so let's see what happens. All right, let me flip these over. And once again, we got some, some kind of warmer patches that were in contact with the defrosting plate, but not all of it is defrosted. And over here, it's still pretty cold. A lot of this feels somewhat, def I mean, it's definitely not defrosted, but it's there are some soft parts here. You can see where I can push it in. Here, not as much. It's definitely thawing faster. Or take a look at them without the stakes. The ice gone is very uniform in how cold it is, while the plate has a big old cold spot in the middle. So it seems like the ice gone is a little more efficient. So I do think that it works. I just think some of the claims are maybe a little bit overblown. So let's quickly recap these products, shall we? As far as the can colander goes, it's simple, it's cheap, it doesn't take up a lot of space, and it does seem to work well. I'm not sure it's something that I really have a need for. I have several colanders of various sizes but I can see that it has appeal and a lot of people seem to like it. Now, as far as the crinkle cutter goes, there's a lot of crinkle cutters out there. This is the first one I've tested out of, but it worked quite well right out of the box. I didn't, there's not really a learning curve involved. It works or it doesn't, and this one seems to work. So this is one I'm going to include on my store. But as far as the store goes, this one's not gonna be in there. The pour spout is just, it's just not designed very well. It doesn't have a good seal, so everything pours out the bottom. Other people complain about the same thing. I'm not sure it's even necessary, so this one is not gonna be in my store, but I will include a link below in case you want one for yourself. Now, as far as the Ice Po goes from Dream Farm, now I'm a huge fan of Dream Farm. I, I love all their products. This is probably not one I love as much as some of the others. It's a very specific use for ice cream sandwiches, and it does seem like it requires softer ice cream than, than the instructions seem to indicate. I do think it works, I just think it has a very specific use. Now, as far as the Ice Gone goes, now I'm not a huge fan of defrosting trays. So, some people like them, some people don't. If you are looking for one, this might be one to consider because it does seem to work pretty well, but it is 60 bucks. Well, that's all I've got. If you've tried any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.